Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. In this lesson, we will look at writing a custom VBA script to accept or decline meetings and create a rule for our mailboxes that will run the script when a specified condition has been met. This is probably as tricky as meeting requests can get for the ordinary user. However, the benefit of using this technique is priceless. For example, let us say that you want to accept meeting requests only if they are sent from a specific contact or contact group. Otherwise, you want to decline all meeting requests. You can create a script to accept meeting requests in VBA for Outlook, and then create a rule that will run the script to accept the meeting request only if it comes from the contact or contacts that you specify. To start, you will need to write a script in VBA that will allow you to accept incoming meeting requests. Within the manual is a sample script that you can enter into the VBA editor for Outlook, which will do just that. We will also discuss which parts of the script you can alter or edit with other coding to change the function of the script to reject all meeting requests and delete the meeting request after processing the request if desired. To start, you will need to open Outlook. Next, open the VBA editor for Outlook. You can do this by pressing the Alt plus the F11 keys on your keyboard to open the VBA Editor for Outlook. Within the VBA Editor window, click the small plus sign next to Project 1, then click the plus sign next to Microsoft Office Outlook Objects to display this Outlook session. Then double click on the This Outlook Session icon to display a coding page to the right of the Editor window. This is where you will type the following code to accept meeting requests. You will type everything that is shown, including and between the words sub and end sub. Now, if you want to change this code to decline meeting requests, you will need to change the OL meeting accepted term to OL meeting declined. The resultant line of code should look like this. If you want to alter the script so that it does not send a response to the meeting organizer, you will need to change the oResponse.Display term to oResponse.Close open parenthesis OL save close parenthesis. The resultant line of code should look like this. If you want to add a line of code to the script that deletes the meeting request after it has been processed, then simply add the following line of code to the script on a new line immediately before the end subline. Now once you have created this script with the options that you prefer, you can simply click the Save button within the VBA Editor Windows toolbar and then close the window. Next you will need to create a mailbox rule on your inbox that will run the script when a meeting request is received. In this case, you will probably need to create a custom rule that is run when an item is received. You can then specify that the rule is only to be run when the item is received from a selected contact or contact group. Then select the Run a Script Action of the Item, and then click the A Script hyperlink to select the Auto Accept Meeting script. Then finish your rule like you normally would. If you need to review Creating Mailbox Rules, please read Lesson 14.1 Creating Mailbox Rules in the Advanced Outlook Manual within this product. Finally, you will need to change your macro security level within Outlook to allow for this script to run. You can change the macro security level within the Options dialog box under the Trust Center in Outlook. You can access the Trust Center by clicking the File tab in the ribbon and then clicking the Options button at the left side of the Backstage view. Then click the Trust Center button at the left side of the Options window. Then click the Trust Center Settings button. Choose Macro Settings from the options listed at the left side of the Trust Center. You can set the security to Notifications for All Macros to be notified by Outlook to enable macros when you initially open your Outlook account. Using the Enable All Macros option is often a poor choice as security software will often reset the setting to Notifications for Digitally Signed Macros All Other Macros Disabled. Your other option is to use a self-cert to sign the macro and then sign the macro after each editing session while leaving the macro security setting at Notifications for Digitally Signed Macros All Other Macros Disabled within Outlook. If you do this, be sure to re-sign the macro anytime you change the code as it will need to be re-signed after every edit. If you are interested in using Self-Cert, which is an optional Office application that allows you to create self-signed macros, you can learn more about the process of adding the program to your Office installation, if it is not already installed, at the following hyperlink.
https colon forward slash forward slash support dot microsoft dot com forward slash en hyphen us forward slash kb forward slash two one seven two two one like what you see pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www dot teach you comp dot com forward slash free